Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, today's Mike O'Mara show is brought to you by our Amazon page. Please remember to shop Amazon, and when you do, go to MikeO'MaraShow.com slash Amazon, or click the Amazon link on our website. It's the best way to shop, and the best way to support this program. Now... On with the show. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeOMaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Oh, dear. Mr. Kennard. Oh. <laughs> I am glad you reached out. But at this time, I am employed by the Mike O'Mara Show. So I will not be able to take on any more executive assistant duties. Jennifer? So, who's that? Hello? We're on the air, Jen. Yes. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was writing letters. I heard. I was, uh, I was typing yeah. up some of my correspondence. Hi! Hi, is Mike around? Uh, no, he's not oh, here. Oh, he's detained? Why would he be here? Well, I'm, you're his assistant. I wanted to know if he was here. I am. Jennifer Wisniewski. Do you work out of, his, assistant. out of his office every day? Yes, I, I do. I remotely nope. there most of no, the times I mean, on I'm, Tuesdays. I come, I come from my home okay. to his home every day, and uh, that's what I do. Uh, if you were, How am I sounding, by the way? You sound you good. Sound great. <laughs> Just checking. I always wonder, because sometimes it sounds really weird down You're self-conscious. Here. You're self-conscious. I know. I know. But anyway, uh, he's are not you, here, so why would you be asking? Are you asking? being actively recruited by another, another yeah, entity? pursuing you? Well, um, my reputation <laughs> stands on its own, and I am uh, rather well regarded within certain corporate communities. Oh, really? If I can answer uh, that as diplomatically as possible. Are you shopping yourself? I'm doing nothing of the kind, Mr. Man. Because that's sometimes a great way to sort of at least put a uh, you know a value on yourself. No, even no, if you're I'm not very looking happy where for I a am. job. I'm very happy where I am, and right. I uh, I have all of Mr. O'Mara's phone numbers, and occasionally <laughs> someone will call, and I will take the call. And I had a conversation with a gentleman named Kennard mm -hmm. who said they have openings for executive assistants, and I responded to him formally and said I'm very happy. You're very what? I'm very happy. <laughs> so you don't want to go anywhere else? No, no, no. I like where I am because I have the flexibility to work my own hours and then pursue my passion at night. <laughs> I don't know. Have we ever talked about your passion? Yeah, we. Oh, never... I'm sure you have. No, we've Not, never... it doesn't jump to mind. No. Oh, you didn't know it? No. Well, it's no big deal. I'm, I'm actually kind of shy about it when you really think about it. Well, things. what is it? What is it, dear? <laughs> kind of okay. Oh, <laughs> the Japanese I art love... of the empty orchestra. I love Kale Oke. Sure. Is there any, I, any places to sing good. it down there? Well, yeah. Uh, lots of piano bars and uh, different locations and strip malls and wait, wait. little watering holes. As a passion, do you get paid to do karaoke or do you... Kale Oke. Do you well, I, no, I, I just, I show up and I'm a regular. Oh, you don't actually <laughs> I'm run... I'm a regular for you don't Kale run, You don't run the evening. Right. You're, You're not a host. Yeah. Or a hostess. No. Would no. you or could you host? I could. I'm talented enough to, I think. At least that's Have what Have you ever considered me. it? Because I'd like to hear so much of being a good host of God Ale Gay is uh, the opening patter. <laughs> Well, no, I don't do that. I show up with several of my friends. Uh, I have I have multiple friends that I gather with, and we're there. We go to one particular lovely one that's in a strip mall uh, in a certain part of town, which is it starts at four thirty, oh, which early. I think is a great time for karaoke because then I can be up bright eyed and bushy tails helping out Mr. O'Mara. <laughs> now, is it a, is a, a cover charge? Do you have a, a minimum, or do you just show up? These boots are made for walking, oh. and that's just what they'll do, because one of these days, these boots are going to walk all over you. A little foreshadowing. Do, 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 I do, love do. that you bring the sex in on the second part of the verse. Well, I think it's a sexy song, and it it's one of my one of my all-time most popular. They always ask for requests. Jennifer, <laughs> I'm sure yeah. they do. Hi, Oscar. Would it be possible for you to... Work with the Michael Mara show in the morning, and then work with. <laughs> Is that Ms. the new name of our show? With Miss Mr. Kennard in the afternoon. 
I look. I have to have some downtime for laundry, and uh, let me tell you something know, about those, myself. Those I shorts do a aren't lot clean of laundry. <laughs> a lot of laundry. I mean, really, all afternoon. Uh, for example, Wednesday it'll be two p.m. and it'll be Granny Panty, Granny Panty, Granny Panty, <laughs> Granny Panty, Granny Panty, <laughs> Granny Panty. <laughs> it's, it's really over the top. It really but if is. you were to take on a second job, you could you could hire a laundress. Uh, a laundress? Yeah. Excuse me, where are we? In London in 1800? You could what send you your washing laundress? out. You could send out your washing and have someone well, do no, it for you. No, no, I don't want to double dip. I, I don't want to double dip. Oh, that's I, gross. I mean, where, who do you think I work for? The Mike O'Mara show? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody double dips on that show. <laughs> You're bewitching laughter. Oh, thank you so very much. Uh, you- Santa baby. Oh, a Christmas song. La, 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 are la, you la, known yeah. for a song at karaoke well, Ga- besides, karaoke. karaoke besides the uh, Nancy Sinatra I uh, Nancy I, who <laughs> Nancy Sinatra Sinatra yeah you, you, don't don't you, over don't overthink you, it, babe. You say potato, I say potato. But thank okay? God we both say garlic. Nancy's, okay. Nancy's Sinatra. Yeah. <laughs> Vogue. Me. Vogue. Oh, the Madonna song. <laughs> Strike a pose. Mr. Romero is having so much trouble thinking of songs right now. What's wrong with him? How I, many requests, I Rob? Think, you That's know your what? department. I think probably, and I can usually tell from the timbre of your voice what song would work. Love, exciting and Ooh. new. No, wrong direction. Come aboard. Wrong direction. We're expecting you. If you want a cr- love boat. Only the hits. <laughs> if you Only want a crowd hits. favorite, what you need yeah. to do is you need to stay pop. What about Cindy Lauper's Girls Just Want to Have Fun? Oh, girls just want to have fun. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Girls just want to have fun. That's all they really want. That's all they want. Beautiful. Oh, whoa. Oh. Sorry, Jennifer had a little phlegm. Yeah. <laughs> Where you go? Do you, ever, do you ever drink a karaoke? Got it, okay? Oh, let go my ego. Do I drink? Come on. What's your signature cocktail? I have a Singapore sling. <laughs> and, I, and I limit myself to four. Four rum-based cocktails? And I, and I never eat the curly fries. <laughs> Jennifer, are you taking advantage Hi. of our Lyft promotion when you use the code TMOS? You get three free rides? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. No, I, 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 I basically put down such a wonderful base before karaoke starts that those four Singapore slings, sometimes I'll uh, get daring and have a slow gin fizz Oh yes. as well. <laughs> and a rum runner. Every now and then I'll have a rum runner, and I like that. And I also like a Brandy Alexander. Of course. More of a wintertime drink, though. More of a wintertime drink, but I also have a nice base. I, I actually, at the particular place that I go to, which yes. is Skeeter Bees, uh, Skeeter Bees, Skeeter Bees has half price wing night. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. all that and protein I, just soaks oh, up the alcohol. They're they're so delicious. I love it, and I love the teriyake for karaoke. <laughs> now, question, and I think a lot of teriyake, teriyake. A lot of people are going to want to know the answer to this. Yeah, go ahead. When you have your wings at Skeeter Bees. And when I have my wings and skewed, I'll answer the question you're going to ask anyway. Ranch when I or do blue laundry cheese. day on Wednesday, I go, Granny Penny, Granny Penny, <gasps> throw that one out. Oh, <laughs> granny no. Penny, Granny Penny, throw that one out. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Ranch or blue cheese, Jen? <laughs> well, I'll show you the Granny Penny. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Gross. <laughs> Jennifer Wisniewski, assistant to Mr. O'Mara. <laughs> How are you liking your Vistaprint cards? Yeah. Oh, they are pink, they are pretty, and I hand them out like wildfire. Do you, do you hand <laughs> any out at Skeeter Bees? Uh, of course I do. Yeah, that's my, well, that's my regular joint. Skeeter Bees on Half Price Wing Night, Your followed joint. by the 4.30 karaoke. So I eat a big plate of wings at about 3.15, 3.30, and then and it helps my voice, actually. Sure. It truly does. Yeah. Do you ever do I duets? No, not really. I, I don't care for the duet. How about I this? I think I've got a better rhythm myself. I, I truly do. Don't go break in my heart. I couldn't if I tried. See, that's a natural. You yeah. really should pick up a good-looking man at Skeeter Bees, and you could do the whole, uh, you know, do the whole duet thing. Kiki D, right? Kiki D and Elton John. Yeah, that's a good song. I like that one. <laughs> Rock. 
Yeah. Oh, no, it's Mock. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Rock. No, it's Mockingbird. Mock. Yeah. Ing. Yeah. Bird. Yeah. Mockingbird. <laughs> say everybody. Can you? All right. <laughs> mock- hey, Rob Speedway. Mock- bird. You can't come. <laughs> oh, that's not nice. Damn. Cancel my well, ticket. Damn. <laughs> well, it's not because he can't sing. What? It's not because you can't sing. Then what's the reason? You need all of my wings. <laughs> it's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. We're on the entertainment capital of the world. Mr. Gossi, I I know you're very busy, but um, can I have your autograph? Certainly. You know which movie of yours I love, Mr. Lugosi? The Invisible Ray. You were great as Karloff's sidekick. Karloff? Sidekick? F*** you! Karloff does not deserve to smell my sh**. That limey sucker can rot in hell for all I care. What happened? How dare that bring up Karloff? You think it takes talent to play Frankenstein? It's all on makeup and then glunting. Bella, I agree 100%. Now, Dracula, that's a role that requires talent. Of course. Dracula requires presence. It, it's all in the eyes and the voice and the hand. That's right. That's right. You seem a little agitated. You want to go outside and get some air? Bullshit. I'm ready now. Roll the camera. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. That's pretty much the way I am before every show, too. I have this big, super meltdown, and then we're ready to go. That's uh, right. Live from the uh, Pfeiffer Room in the heart of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. This is the Mike O'Mara Show, on the air and online everywhere. The Mike O'Mara Show, a daily radio and internet broadcast with the greatest listeners in the universe because they get it. If you're here, you will, too. Our phone lines always open at 888-920-MORE. That's 888-920-6673. Please take note of that number because tomorrow, yes, it's Washington. Wide Open Wednesday, and I've been tending to forget that it's Wide Open Wednesday, but I'm going to remember now because it's all of Tuesday's show, and I'm telling you we're going to do this on Wednesday. We're going to be taking your phone calls exclusively on the show tomorrow, maybe four or five of them, 888-920-6673. Our our show today brought to you by FanDuel, Uh, fantasy football fans. If you're only playing season-long fantasy football, you are missing out. Um in his never-ending quest to do a lot of different little things and do them all with the same level of mediocrity that he brings to his day-to-day existence. Right. Rob Spiewak was tasked with checking our FanDuel League and seeing how we would do and how listeners would do uh, each and every week to give you the highlights of FanDuel because we love playing the Mike O'Mara Show FanDuel League, and you can play that. Uh, do it today. Get in today by, by going to FanDuel.com slash TMOS. And I happen to check the FanDuel League, the TMOS FanDuel League, which I have missed because you have been such wonderful customers yes. of FanDuel, and you get in on Tuesday and fill that league up, and... Finally, I'm in the FanDuel League, and I get in early enough, and I modify my lineup, and I am thrilled because I see that on Sunday when I checked it last, I was number five in our 250-person FanDuel League, and I assumed that that was going to hold and that I would be in the middle of the pack. I come in to the studio and say, Rob, did you get those FanDuel results? And Rob Spiewak has completely like missed what league it is because he's not really into all I did sports. is follow the instructions Mike and I what do I you know mean where, you, what do you mean all you did was follow the instructions I followed the instructions I went to fanduel.com slash let me TMOS. just say in your in your effort to defend yourself please don't throw the client under yes. the bus no Let's no clarify not at Thank all you, I just want to make not sure you, before you go down that the uh, you know that that road somehow I know that, you ended up in a separate league I did and I did wonderfully Mike out of 250 I was 177th he did well, better than I Well, out of 250 in the Mike O'Mara <laughs> Show League, I was sixth. Yay! That's right. I was sixth. And, Oscar, what were you? 246th out of 250. So you is beat four your, people. Is that, is that your worst performance ever? <laughs> That's my all-time ever? worst. 
It can happen. It yeah. can happen. It's also any a lot given of fun. Sunday, Mike. Hey, yeah, let me before we discuss this. <laughs> yeah, try you FanDuel 40 now. Bucks? Forty bucks. And, <laughs> and get up to $50 in free entries. New users who deposit will get five free entries to NFL 50-50 Beginner Contest valued at up to 50 bucks. You'll get one free entry a week for five weeks. The value of free entries varies on deposited amounts. Go to FanDuel.com, click the Join Now button, and use the code TMOS for five free entries. That's F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com, promo code TMOS, void where prohibited. And congratulations yeah. to our winner, Kev Tab. With Kev 156 tab. points, good job, Kev. Two hundred. He picks up. He picks up two hundred American dollars. Indeed. Rob, uh, my, I'm behind on uh, our clock today, so you'll have to single me uh, for the breaks today. All I right, we're at about that. 15 minutes. If you just uh, want to, you sort of ballpark it. That so. said, that's good. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So that that you'll you, will you? How did this happen? How did you? Not, I guess uh, it was a horrible key stroking on my part. It won't happen again. We allege that he was drunk when he entered the <laughs> No, you see, and that is so totally out of. I would left like field. a logo on top of the page to let people know they're at the TMO but we we the logo I, a lot of people have had this issue where with, yes. with FanDuel with getting into this so. uh, for perspective if the logo is not it, you know when you it's not there when you enter the league then you're in the wrong league right that's exactly it. okay exactly that's uh, it. when it says so play that, now a, there's a big Michael Mara show logo that said Mike, you're in the money once again. Congratulations. Yeah, but, you must but be very I really, proud. But this week I didn't go to the Sunday Million, and I should have. Oh. I don't know how. No, no. you know, in our league I did okay. I would not have done uh, well. You, you, the guys that ace this usually have a two in front of the, uh, their, their score. Like 200 they're usually, points, yeah. They're usually in the 200s. And in order to get that, the people that win, win the really, really big money have to have uh, everybody, almost everybody in their lineup, perform and have their game of the week. Yeah. I think that, or their game of the season in some cases. But yeah. you, you your know, pick overall was solid with Hoyer uh, from the from the Bears as you picked him, and not a lot of people did. And that's the yeah, way you and, win. Uh, by the way, 6.4% of people owned him in our league. Uh and he pulled in 23, a little over 23 points. Uh, I got 19 from uh, Le- Levon Bell. Uh, or is it Le'Veon? Le'Veon. Uh, Le'Veon. Uh, Jordan Howard got me 23 points. Emmanuel Sanders got me 11 points. Uh, Michael Crabtree got me 12 points, which is about as good as he ever does for me. Uh, Antonio Brown, a real go-to in fantasy leagues, uh, he got me 18 points. And tight end Zach Miller of your Chicago Bears, who uh, in you know in consort with uh, Brian Hoyer, he pulled in ten points, a little over ten points for me. And then the the real key uh, to my success, Adam Venatieri, the kicker for the Indianapolis Colts, he got twenty three points. I had I him very, this very, as well this week. It was excellent points from him. Good stuff. And, yeah, so it's a it's a blast, and it makes it uh, it makes it <laughs> no really, matter what really league exciting. you're in, it's, it's always fun. Fun. it makes your yeah. Sunday much. much and by more the fun. way, we don't talk sports a lot on this show, but congratulations to. The Washington Redskins on beating the Cleveland Browns yeah. that, this weekend. How are your, no, Gi- no, how are your Giants? That's not exactly how it fell. Out. No, who did they who did they beat this week? The Redskins beat the uh, the Baltimore Ravens. This Baltimore weekend. Ravens. Yeah. I'm sorry, I said Cleveland Browns. I knew it was time AFC machine. Yeah. So uh, yes, uh, let's congratulations on their victory over big sports the weekend in DC. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, moving right along, I have to say farewell. See, I had Cleveland on my brain yes, because yes. I'm thinking about my beloved Boston Red Sox who said sayonara to their playoff run with a clean sweep. The Cleveland Browns, uh, I'm sorry, the Cleveland Indians swept the Red Sox and they are gone. Big Poppy, uh, oh, he's so done. He's tearing up. Yeah. Career is over. They brought him out for a curtain call after the Indians Too painful to hear that. Do you want to hear that, how it was covered? Yeah, I'd love to hear that. Because, right, it was, uh, because actually, I turned it off before he came back out. I didn't want to watch he the uh, Cleveland celebration. Oh, I what saw the press conference. No, okay. Well, he, no, he spoke the other day over the weekend He yeah. uh, before the end of the regular season. A lot season, of big poppy. He had a lot of big yeah. poppy right. moments. Here's the uh, final call of the game right now. Bradley and Pedroia, the runners. Here it comes. Fly ball. Nice job, Shower Travis line. Shaw. Nice Shoot job, Travis ball. Shaw. Yeah, great season. Cleveland great wins. potential unrealized. And the Indians are headed. To the American Soft League Championship weak Series. pop up, which you they did all season the long. Red Sox. I hate that play by play guy for TBS, too. And you hear the crowd. Pause it for a second, Ron. Well, all the brooms and out. And you hear the crowd. 
When did every single announcer become one of these guys? When did everybody turn into Larry Michael? When those Michael? guys started being rewarded, Mike. Yeah. Unreal. I did the check guys to make that, sure the tape was at the right speed when I recorded it. I mean, the guys that really talk, uh, it's it, its more and more. The guy they hired for the Red Sox is one of these guys, too. What? Not a lot of humor. Not a lot of diversion from what the script says. Safe. They're safe. It sucks. When did the Red Sox stop wanting to win? Uh, two weeks before the end of the regular season. <laughs> they had a they had an amazing, Solid absolutely run. amazing late season run. You had them pegged then, for rings. I remember that. And then poof, two weeks before the maybe a week, maybe about a week before the end of the regular season, and suddenly they're getting blown out. They're and they're they're not hitting at all, and that carried into the playoffs. And so it's all about timing. And uh, I don't know. Can I tell you, as sad as I am. For my beloved Boston Red Sox, not making it any further in the playoffs, I now can direct all of my energy to a long-suffering fan base, and I know there are going to be a lot of people that will be happy to hear this, Yes, but I am really, really thinking perhaps, perhaps this may be the year for the Chicago Cubs. And you want to talk about a fan base that has suffered yes. for a long time. This is that fan base, and I think... This could be it. They got a great manager. They got a great team. And now I'm going to focus my energy on uh, the Chicago Cubs. They just and if lost they, last night. If they uh, if they make it to the the World Series, I will tell you it will be very very special. We'll see what happens. So Six five yeah. loss to the Giants. Uh, they're leading the series, so they just can't seem to shut it out. Hopefully they will. Yeah, it's scary. It's scary. That's why I'm pulling for him. And uh, sorry for all you Giants fans that listen to TMOS. There are more San Francisco yes. Giant fans that listen to our show than there are Chicago Cubs fans. But uh, I don't know. It's just exciting. So, yeah, I just realize now when you talk sports, you get into a, a problem because there are going to be a lot of people in the Northern California area. They're going, shut up, Mike. Shut up. But, hey, San Francisco Giants fans, haven't you had your fun? They have. Haven't you had your satisfying victories? Haven't you? Haven't you really? Has it Can't been 100 like years for the Cubs? Yeah. I mean, it Something has, like literally, that. right? I'll look it up, but I'm not sure exactly what I haven't paid all that much attention. But I know that I watched the documentary on Cubs fans, and it yeah. reminds me of the way I was back in 2004 when the Red Sox won their first World Series in, a, in 80 years. And it's just you love to see people that haven't had it. That's the cool thing about this wonderful game of baseball that you can go years and decades and you can, and almost a century in the case of, of the Cubs, or a century, maybe, where you haven't had that happen. And I'm very, very excited about that. So we'll have to wait. And see. I hope it doesn't take away your enthusiasm for the Washington Redskins, Mike. Uh, no, no. And uh, that that victory over the Baltimore Ravens, you have to tip your cap to the Washington Redskins. So let me uh, take this opportunity to congratulate them once again. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. Natitude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the Natitude. Yeah, they're yeah. still in it. Oh, and the Nats. Oh, yeah. see? Oh, okay. So now I've alienated another fan base because we have most of our listeners listen to the most of our listeners are fans of the Nationals and fans of the San Francisco it's Giants. It's okay, Mike. So Mike, now I have taken can the two in. markets. I have taken the two markets where I have the most listeners and alienated them. All right. No, no. Let you me can just tune say in, Mike, I am baby. voting for Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Both Thank of you them. very much. Oh, I don't think you've alienated oh, anybody. I'm Mike, Donald Trump, and I approve this. You're message. genuine, I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. You are genuine. <laughs> you've always been a Red Sox fan. Yep. You've always talked about them. Now your I am team genuine. is out. Yes. Uh, I am concerned. You are strong. I am, you are what strong. Else? I am right. right, that's what I was going to do. Smart. Read ahead. <laughs> good at that. You are smart. Good, good, good at that. You are smart. You are smart. I couldn't get, I couldn't get my finger on the button quick enough before Rob did that. So Oscar beat trying. me to it. Actually, I, 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 it was my fault, Mike. My it was fault. Your fault. My Don't fault. read ahead in the script. Sorry. Anyway, uh, uh, so but the uh, best it, part against the Nats and uh, Dodger series, Mike, is when they are playing in Dodger Stadium. Look for Larry King behind home plate in a lawn chair. <laughs> Today, five o'clock. Is that really 5 true? PM. Is that I, really true? I saw him on TV. It looked like he was in either some sort of upgraded seat or maybe a special seat. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I have uh, trouble getting up out of the folding chair. Can I say one thing? I know this makes Oscar nervous. Can I say one thing about the election? Please. Please. The one thing about the election, Mike Barnacle on my uh, new show, Morning Joe, which, uh, you know, I, I, I like the show because it's kind of grown up, but I don't like Joe Scarborough. Shocker. Now like that's him. new. Yeah, it's I don't new. Like you loved him last week. Last I week you were. Show. Yeah. I love the show. He's 
he is tough to handle. I don't know. I think he last is tough week, to handle. He requested a uh, booking of Joe Scarborough. Yeah. I like no. I'd like to get Joe, but I think sometimes he goes over the top. Okay. And, uh, what does and he do? Kind of what, a, how does he go over the? Well, top? Well, he our politics are different. Yeah. Uh, sure. we, uh, that that's well documented. That uh, Joe played for uh, and plays for the uh, the other team, but so sometimes he's a little giddy, uh, you know, about needling the other people that uh, kind of have my political. Do you know who might be good on that show? And he has some time now. Is Billy Bush? <laughs> Billy Bush. Hey guys. Hey, they're they're talking about there. There might be a a little mutiny over at uh, the Today Show that they want Billy Bush out after this. I'm like, totally. That's, that's the rumor. Sure or not. Yeah. yeah, that's that's going on. They got to pay uh, him out, right, if they, they really take him off there? They've got uh, this All guy, my money, guys. <laughs> on Morning Joe, my new favorite show that I watch, they've got this guy, uh, Mike uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. No, I'm sorry, Mike <laughs> Barnacle. That's a uh, horrible name. Uh, Mike <laughs> Barnacle, and he said that it, it was his theory that right now, and I totally agree with this, 80%, you could get 80%, 90% that would be polled to say they just want this election to be over. Oh, they yeah. Want that, oh, I they agree. want all of this Woo! just to end. It we are, as a country, we've been wounded. We have been wounded as a country mm -hmm. by this. And it may not say wounded. What do you mean? We're, we still have the strongest military. No, trust me, this has been, this is, this is, get me another Kardashian story. This has dragged us down. That might be part of the problem, Oscar. This has dragged down the United States. And whether, you know, what direction it goes in after the fact is uh, to be seen. We will see what happens with that. But it's a, uh, I agree with that. I kind of said the anxiety that a lot of people feel um, on both sides. And I think on one side, you've got people that are super partisan. And on the other side, you have people that are super partisan. But on my team, Team Hillary, I will tell you, there is this anxiety that I feel whenever I hear anything about it because I really I think they are genuine am I uh, in love with her not not by no. a long shot I don't I, I'm like so many people but we feel anxiety because I just it scares me the prospect of him becoming it, president and that anxiety I just want that to go away I want that to go up Way. That's the way I feel. About so uh, just to pivot, if you don't mind, from the actual town hall meeting, there's this guy, the, the hand man with um, with the actual uh, red sweater on. Oh, I was going to talk about him now, in the audio vault, Ken yeah. Bone. Yeah. Can we take a break and come back and talk about that? Yeah. Because I'm curious why. I have either been, you know, we all multitask and I'm in my computer and I'm watching that half listening on TV. I, I know it's the guy with the Izod red sweater. <laughs> yes. But I want to I want to know more about why this guy... Why this guy has captured the national I have a theory. We'll talk about I have a it, okay? Theory, yeah. uh, we'll take a break and we'll come back with more. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. Hey everyone, intern Dotson here. You know, the one whose microphone is never turned on. You know what tomorrow is? It's Wide Open Wednesday. Starting at 9 a.m., the Mike O'Mara Show takes your phone call. Want to be a small part of TMOS? Do you have a great story for the boys? Make sure to dial 888-920-MORE for your chance to talk to Mike, Rob, Oscar, and even Pony. Wide Open Wednesday, starting at 9 a.m. That's 888-920-6673. And make it count. Hey, Rob Spiewak. Yes. How many posts in a after at the conclusion of this show? Right. How many posts do you think with a with a half sentence witticism promoting Wide Open Wednesday could you generate? Could you do it hourly? Absolutely. Where, and then share them along all our platforms. I, you Keep know what? When you, you share on my can you share on my page? You bet. Not and my page. Hourly. Uh, yeah. Well, of course, Oscar is. You know, he's an outlier, tough guy. But uh, <laughs> between you and I. Uh, yeah, <laughs> hourly is perfect. All right. All right. And Oscar, you can put them up, too, can't Get a you? little, get a lot. Call in. Uh, That's uh, right. <laughs> Wear I a think, jacket. Take it off. We're, well, we're Rob's drunk. Box here. <laughs> I legitimately would love to get more phone Mike, calls tomorrow. We get, uh, we get, we have to start exactly at 9 o'clock because right, we are that's slammed important. 9 o'clock. And, and by the way, I've been, I've been in here at 9 o'clock, and then I'm flapping my gums because I forget yeah. that we're doing Wide Open Wednesday. We'll so remind that's you on it's all Wednesday. of us. We'll okay, remind you right hourly. Here. We'll remind you it's Wednesday. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. Uh, welcome back to the Michael Ferris Show, brought to you by Stamps.com. <laughs> Get used to that, pal. Hey, you Mike, know. today is we're, Tuesday. We're all along. If you two are along with me for the ride, you know it's going to probably get to that. You know, He doesn't know what day it is. Papa, it's Friday. <laughs> Why isn't Fallon on tonight? <laughs> Sunday. Oh. <laughs> I've been in the studio <laughs> waiting for you for 14 hours. <laughs> oh my God, Where are you guys? That's right. Why isn't Ed Sullivan on? <laughs>
Oh, God, so true. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Stamps.com. We love Stamps.com. Yes. You're going to love Stamps.com. This is the better way to do the postage thing, okay? Stamps.com, it's the better way to buy postage. Stamps.com lets you get the postage you need the minute you need it right at your own desk. Just use your own computer and your printer to buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter or package. If you send out a lot of stuff for your business, or if you even do a lot of sending to family and sure. packages uh, like Rob Spiewak does, this is the quick and easy way to do it. Stamps.com is a fraction of the cost of one of those expensive postage meters, and you'll get special postage discounts that you can't even get at the post office. Get started with Stamps.com today. Within minutes, you'll be printing postage from your own desk. Go to Stamps.com, and before you do anything else, all you have to do is click on the microphone at the top of the homepage. Then you type in that wonderful code that will help you out. That's T-M-O-S. Stamps.com and T-M-O-S. You will never, ever have to go to the post office again. And let me say, uh, right now, you can use our code T-M-O-S for a special offer. That's a four-week trial. $110 $110 bonus offer, and that includes postage and a digital scale. The so best. I've, I've been half paying attention to this guy from the town hall debate the other night that was wearing the, the red sweater. Why is he beca- – is it because he just looks like a nerd? Is well, that the, my theory the is this, is that I think Carrie and I went to bed and we both said to each other, you know what? That town hall meeting made us uneasy. Oh, there everybody, was so much bad that. energy, and I'm not even being yeah. partisan. Everybody was just interrupting. The moderators were useless, and it just felt bad. And then towards the very end, this guy stands up. And first of all, I knew he was going to trend when I saw his name because they put it up. Ken Bone. That's a funny name. Ken Bone. <laughs> and let's, act, man. let's actually this, go this to the is clip. It into, this is clarifying it a little Let bit. Let me put me. it into perspective. Here's the clip. It's very brief. Here's right. his introduction. Ken which, Bone is his name. Which is funny. His Ken question, Bone. which is fine. But then in big 38-point lettering on your television, it says, Ken Bone. We have one more question from Ken Bone about uh, energy policy. Ken? What steps will your energy policy take to meet our energy needs? while at the same time remaining environmentally friendly and minimizing job loss for fossil power plant workers. I was immediately entranced, and I knew this would happen. I thought it would happen it, faster. And by the way, okay, all right, so now I'm thinking about it, and now you got me on. Mike, now it's Ken Bone. Ken Bone. Now, Bone. I, now <laughs> I'm paying attention. Ken Bone. What a beautifully worded question. I yes. mean, it it's encompassed- wonderful. It encompassed everything about energy and climate change and all of that. He's asking a question about what will your policies do to, you know, help Ten. the environment while not screwing people that work in fossil fuels like coal and uh, and and oil. So that's, that's phase one. It's a funny right. name with a good question. Ken phase, Bone. Mike, his name is Ken Bone. And is the, there a chance we could get Josh Murphy, our former intern, to just, say his just name? call in? On the show. Oh yeah! <laughs> By the way, Josh Bode. Murphy, who launched a uh, another candidacy, didn't wasn't he the alternative candidate? There was a guy out there that looked exactly like him. That was another candidate for president. I think you might, out. Mike. Uh, they were watching uh, old horror movies on TCM. You might have been seeing Nosferatu. Uh, they look very much alike. <laughs> do you have the red eyes on situation? Of why? Yes, okay. I do. As a matter of fact, but the thing is, is that he got up and when they said Ken Bone, I knew it was going to go. Bone. He has. It took about a day for it to take off. Apparently, uh, people are into the fact that he looks like the bad guy from Toy Story. The guy that tried to attack Woody and, and save Woody. And <laughs> he wants the toys. The he wants, toys. yeah, he does. Ken Bone. And so he, also, he is going to be now the number one Halloween costume, they're saying. His timing is right. And he's been an that's aw- the, See, I think that's taking it too far. Well, that it's happening, Mike. You can't stop it. But it'll be the it. red costume. And maybe, you know, I'm a fat guy. I could probably wear that. But no, I've got a gray beard. So. And the, the beard uh, ruins me for Halloween. Yesterday every received an offer from a small time porno company. To do a sex tape. <laughs> because he is Ken Bone. Ken Bone. But Ken Bone. The thing that really is troubling people, and I think was going to trend, is why the red sweater? Because right. most of the people that were on the stage were wearing suits. CNN asked him yesterday, why the red sweater? You're going to like this tape. I had a really nice olive suit that I love a great deal, and my mother would have been very proud to see me wearing on television. 
but apparently I've gained about 30 pounds. And when I went to get in my car the morning of the debate, I split the seat of my pants all the way open. Uh, so the red sweater is plan B. I'm glad it worked out. Ah, Ken so Bone. It's Ken Bone. So he I has grabbed Ken Bone. America. I'm in, I'm in love, love with Ken Bone. That's why you don't. Everybody loves him. He's the only piece of positive energy from that debate. And I think that's why America has grabbed onto him. <laughs> I liked him from word one. It just took 24 hours longer than I thought. He also oh, can I? Yeah, go ahead. He also went on. Uh, they asked, "Well, why the why did you pick the red uh, the red uh, sweater vest?" And yeah. they said, "Well, to be fair, it was the easiest thing to put on, and my wife dresses me." <laughs> Ken Bone. Ken Bone. <laughs> so he mentions his mother and his wife, which yes. I think is absolutely fantastic. I wonder that if he wrote the question great. on his own, or Ken his wife Bone. Oh, Ken Bone. Ken Bone. Ken Bone. Uh, we have to get Josh on the show to uh, to do that. That'll be uh, that'll be incredible. Can I ask you guys one question? Sure, one, one thing about the debate. This is not partisan. You know where I stand, but it's no. not. I'm asking Fair about Trump balance. himself. Trump uh, has Trump done <laughs> has Trump done debates where he has unbuttoned his uh, suit jacket? I hope because he was. Uh, has what does he, that mean? Nothing. No, but I'm curious because he looked. He looks like he has put on. More since like the Mike, we first mentioned debate. this yesterday yeah. on the show. They both look horrible. Yeah, both well, Hillary, Hillary and Hillary looks, Donald. Hillary, Hillary looks like. Look but, but I'm not disheveled. Trying to be, I, but I'm I'm not talking about the disheveled because you know what? I don't buy into that too much because I think Trump has his uniform, which is his that suit. tie I'm, is all the way down to his knees. He has, has the nothing extra worse than someone he has the that extra doesn't know tie. how to tie a tie. Yes, but the thing about it is, has he? You know, how many pounds you figure he's gained in this? Oh, process? I'm out of this. You guys have a better grasp. Oh, of course. <laughs> what? Because you're thin, you can't say a guy looks like he's gained weight. I don't like. I don't know what weight gain looks like. I don't. I, I do. don't know that, right? Yeah. Every day, every day, I do, and I know what weight loss looks like too. I truly, truly do. In every single day of my goddamn life, Oscar. We started this podcast in 2009, and you tell me you don't know what weight gain looks like. Where have you been looking? I'm right here. Yeah, yeah, but it, that's he that's, just looked. He looked that's like dramatic, from the side. Right? Here's the thing, I, and let me tell you what. And, and you know what? I will offer you this. The fact is, when you are a big guy, that's a huge tell. If you have to unbutton your jacket, that is making you more comfortable, and it's a necessity. And that, to me, was a tell about the... <laughs> but not way, just that. It'd it's, be like Mike Huckabee uh, wearing the same <laughs> suit oh, that, that he wore five years coat. ago. Yeah. You know, he has a coat that is... He can keep that buttoned always. Well, and, you know what? It look, looks like Mike Huckabee picked up his coat from a Mater D because he showed up unready well, at a restaurant. There is no way, if you are fat, that you are going to be able to wear the suits that men wear today. No. Because somewhere oh, no. along the line, men caught up with women where the only look that is fashionable is the skinny look. And or healthy. It's bone. It's healthy. Skin, it's uh, healthy. <laughs> No, but I mean it's thin. The the, the I, I will say the thin, the emaciated, the thin cut. If you don't have the V uh, on your back that actually goes down with right, the, it's tough to get. You have to get a custom jacket. Yep, you have to get, and it just doesn't cut it when you've done. And I think if you look, if this guy is everything people say he is, as far as people can't tell him a lot of stuff, it, wouldn't that also translate into his own look because he has. From the best of my knowledge, he's been a big guy, but he hasn't had what I would call a serious weight problem. I think no, he's no, a no, tall no. guy. He, he's tall, but that looked to me like he was, un, for the very first time, he was uncomfortable, and that's why the suit button. And I'll tell you, that's just, when you're doing the presidential politics, that's not a good look. Can I tell you one other thing? Yeah. What I noticed was <laughs> these guys that do this, because they're I, cause I went to the political rally. Yeah. And when I went to this political rally, you could tell the difference between the guys that were the career politicians and the you know the schlubs running around. How? Like night and day. The way they dress. Mm. You know when one of these guys comes in, then you got the whole Secret Service thing. They they have a you know well, they have the big tell, jacket yeah. because they got a howitzer underneath sure. it. Sure. But the fact is you look at these guys and when they'd come up on stage, now I know it's the vice president and the senator from uh, Florida, but you looked at these guys, and then you looked at the like the local councilman, <laughs> and you're like, okay, the local councilman is dressed this way, and then you have the senators. They just look and watch them on TV. These guys have been doing it for a million years. They know how they, they know how to look. But they, I they say, if you do. were to go back, say two years, and look at an appearance, you know, Trump used to do Letterman all the time, right? And he would right. come out, and he'd have the same outfit. It would be a red tie or a blue tie. 
dark blue suit, but at right. least it fit Same him. uniform. Yeah, a uniform. Simple. And at least it fit By him. the way, Hillary, I get when I watch Hillary and I see the outfit she's wearing, I picture this uh, futuristic sci-fi movie <laughs> where she goes where she goes into this like plexiglass cone and it makes it sound like powering down and then and then she is completely like she's just in her underwear and then they lower down they lower this outfit on her and she comes out with her outfit stop wearing your pajamas yeah. to debate <laughs> yeah don't get dressed like the chamber in the movie The Fly this is not what we want you know but I to it, me it, you don't you're not looking for style in a president but you, oh, I am. you are observing no you yeah. have to look put together and well, you know I mean, for a guy that for a guy it's a suit well yeah I mean, but it looks like to me he stepped up aside yeah, wait a minute wait wait it's looking good or looking bad in your suit okay That's it. same thing can be said for a woman she looked bad in that moo much more of a challenge <laughs> much more of a challenge for a woman oh i would say that much it's the opposite actually mike because a woman has so many more options for what they can wear. A man's Hit that got alarm again. A That's man, misogyny they, again. They no. do. A man has you, I, a I uniform, would win the which is the I would, suit. I would debate you to the death. It is so much more difficult for a woman because they have to put all these different things together. Well, no, where the men I, just put let on me a clarify. uniform. It's like, it's like a tuxedo it's much at a formal. It's exactly. easier to there you go. find a proper dress because you have all the options in the world. And I imagine a woman like Hillary Clinton does have options. I, I disagree. That she can find something that is flattering to her. Every, and, I, and I'm talking about specifically Hillary. I'm talking about all women. I, I I'm think talking about Hillary Clinton, difficult. Mike. Hillary Clinton. But she, she could Hillary dress Clinton. a little better when she presents herself to the country. And she could no, grow the, her hair out, too. I want to see that. But I reject your <laughs> I, skin. I reject your idea that it is easier for a woman. It is not easier for, it's a, not for a woman. Because a not woman, for a woman. Has, for a has, woman has to do the hair, <laughs> For a the presidential makeup, the candidate, thing. it is easier for a female to have options because men only have one thing. You either look good in a, a penguin suit or you don't. You're, you're, but that's a contradiction because the very fact that you have got a woman doing it means that this all a guy has to do is wear a suit. That means it's easier for him. Now, is there an opportunity for a woman to really like layer look up better? Wear and, some <laughs> scarves. Layer up <laughs> scarves. Layer up. Like for example, <laughs> at the convention where she wore the white. Pantsuit. You know? I love my mom. God that, bless was a, her. Happy, that was a smart one. Ha- happy that birthday, was a smart mom. Pantsuit. It was. Well, my mom has lost 30 pounds, but when she was a roly poly, she would layer up. And I'd be like, all right, you're looking good. This works. Men do the same thing. I think it's the uh, sport jacket, the shirt, and the t shirt underneath. I think that's a, a good look, too. I mean, that was, uh, you know, that's the, that's the compensation you have for that. Yes. But overall, the challenge, by the way, I think we can all agree on this. The challenge for women just going out in general is far greater I, than it is for us. They have that's to why work hard. That's why we're waiting for. That's why we're sitting in the car waiting for forty five minutes. They for do God. have. Am to I work right? Harder. They Am do I have right? to work hard, but that's why they get the free drinks. That's why. <laughs> yeah, that's what Hillary's looking for. And so, looking what's the, the takeaway here? The president of the United States, the female candidate, must uh, wear no, no, scarves. I, I want to, again to clarify. It's just for her. Women in general have a harder time getting ready because they have so many layers of getting ready that they have to so get. So your theory is that because she is this uh, the the, nem- the Democratic nominee, she has all the access to all these clothes and stylists. She could- she yeah. styles better. Yeah. yeah. Well, she could go to any polls. I will accept that point. Yeah. I will also accept the point that women can do whatever they choose. They could maybe wear the same suit just like a guy. I watch Rachel Maddow. So, I mean, well, it's the truth. It's the truth. I watch her. Here's our guy. president, for Annie Hall. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Diane Keaton. We'll take a break. Come back with more fun. And uh, I'll tell you some cool stuff about my kid when nice. we come back on the show. Nice. It's time to download the TMOS app. It's the easiest way to have access to all your favorite shows and characters on more broadcasting, like Oscar Santana. I guess we don't need no stinking budget. Oh, no. Rob Spiewak. No, got a player thing, Robert. The show is a... The man himself, Mike O'Mara. We've got to protect our phony baloney job, gentlemen. We must do something about this immediately. Immediately, immediately. Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. How about Todd Moore? Little bastard shot me in the ass. Tony Perkins. Excuse me while I whip this out. (laughs) And let's not forget Gary Stein. It is my privilege to extend to you a laurel. And hearty handshake. So why haven't you downloaded the TMOS app yet? You do it for Randolph Scott. Randolph Scott. 
Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. I'm holding in my hot little hand right now my movement watch. MVMT is movement watches. Movement watches founded on the belief that style. I can't help myself, but when I read this copy, I want to sound like Jack Albertson. Do it. Movement watches founded on the belief that style should not break the bank. Thank you. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Their goal is to change the way people think about fashion by offering high-quality, minimalist products at revolutionary prices. I love this watch. I really, really do. This is a very, very stylish. Dr- uh, you know, I know it's got a leather band on it, but I think it's a good dress watch. It's too. classy. It's got and, a blue face and silver yep. markings on it. It's just and beautiful. they have so many, so many varieties of watches there. Over half a million watches sold in over 160 countries. MVMT Movement has shown itself to be the world's fastest growing watch company. We all have them. We love them. Great looking, stylish, and they're solid and heavy too. And uh, they start at just ninety five dollars. You can get a watch that's valued at like four hundred to five hundred dollars. Uh, that's what it would normally set you back to get a watch from Movement. Uh, you know, a watch like this from Movement is about ninety five dollars starting, and then they're fantastic. Classic design, quality construction, and their styled minimalism is uh, is offered to you at the best possible price. Really terrific. You can get 15% off today with free shipping and a free return by going to movementwatches.com slash TMOS. That's MVMTwatches.com slash TMOS. MVMTwatches.com slash TMOS. Step up your watch game. Uh, and I'm getting compliments on my movement watch all the time. I love that, too, when we get a great That's new nice, advertiser yeah. on the show. And then I go out and somebody says, hey, where'd you get that? And I say, let me tell you. Do the whole spiel Perfect. for it right there, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara show. Um, I see my son's future. Ooh, and it is comedy. I I will tell you why. Does there he get are, that from his mom or? He is like a normal three year old where he likes to throw things. And uh, you know, we were throwing a football around in his room last night, and it's this uh, little Nerf plastic thing with, mm-hmm. uh, and it's it lights up, and he he's just he's perfectly normal. However, what really gasses this kid, what gets this kid, what I have observed at at his three years of age, what truly motivates him. I pick him up from school, and that'll lead into the next thing when I went into his school yesterday. But he just loves to do shtick and the new thing we do it started with the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the giant meatball where he unhinged his jaw and started laughing <laughs> like a like a it, mad lib for a little kid he changes yeah, be, the object and yeah. then he's doing a million of them and uh then he says daddy you do one and we're trading riffs back and forth and uh you know doing the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the toilet and I look in the back, and he is just the head is back, and his face is That's red. He's awesome. laughing That's so the out. Best. And then he dives in, and I'm like, he wants to do this all the time. Uh, and I think that you know, I'm like, what? The, you look at a three year old, you have no idea what uh, what's what's their what their life's going to be, what's going to happen, what they're going to be interested in, what they're going to excel at. But I looked at that, and I said, well, there's no doubt that I got my boy the comedy gene. He likes to do shtick, and he's got a fabulous. Even at this young age, I can tell you he has a fabulous sense of humor, and that makes me like burst out of my my heart burst out of my chest because I'm so psyched about that. The other thing I will tell can you can I ask is a question that, before you move yes, on? Go right you're talking, yeah. He's just turned three a couple months ago, right? So yeah, he's like thirty eight months old. July, right? Does he do voices? And I don't mean that in a jive way because you know he Julia sings. was a big one for like he, sings. he does sing. Yeah, How's he sings a little bit. Uh, pretty good. I you know I've got to get better at. When you take a picture of him, I don't yeah. know if this is all three-year-olds, or you try to record him, that's when it just, it's like automatic shutdown. It's like trying to get the perfect capture. Well, they're and, too young, because then they're, it's almost that pressure that they don't want. They just want to be themselves. That's no, why, they want to be what? themselves, yeah. and if you, if you stick an iPhone in his yeah. face, and he just goes, oh, and just shuts off You completely. need to sort of do it secretly. I have, you know, video, miles of video of the kid that's just boring. Or... Do you take that separate approach? You're saying you did. You used that. You would hide it. Right? I would. would hide I it. would sort of do more of a relaxed setting, like a almost like a session. <laughs> Shut your, up. Do you value your audio tape uh, more than time. your video? Ten thousand times more. <laughs> because you know what? Them. When you listen to them, I think if you like sit down and do like a mini recording session with them, mm-hmm. the first four or five minutes are going to be lost because you're going to be tense. But as they relax, there's no camera on them. There's just a microphone near them. You get a purer representation of the kid. Mike, you got to, I would say you go the opposite direction and you build a mock stage in his bedroom. Right. And, <laughs> like right next to the yeah, pirate ship. And is you that what I get, put on a pirate adventure that uses the stage. And you get him comfortable being on a stage and in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. I don't want him to be a show kid. I just wanted to tell you that it's cool it's that he likes John Bene O'Mara. You know what? As far as I'm concerned, if the kid likes telling a joke, uh, I'm cool. I don't know Toddlers necessarily where I, I even want him to be the class clown. You know, I'm not sure I want that but either. But, Mike, you know? I, will tell you, I will say this. With both kids, the audio stuff is what I value because right. it seems like it's more like them. What about enough with the yucks, more with some times tables? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, okay. Mike, he, you really should take him up to the 12s. Uh, tens are good. The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the piece of cheese. <laughs> the now this is uh, August. The spider climbed up the plate of meatloaf. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. <laughs> the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I, mean, I mean, you know, now that's me doing it, but now I'm saying, you're, I didn't you're get him killing him. I'm, I'm killing him with it. And, Wouldn't it be uh, great if after the third one he said, I don't know, Dad, a lot of food references. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it sad, though, that we're all going to head down that road? That, yeah. that this, this delightful, you know, simple riff of comedy is going to be replaced by, Dad, please. Please don't do that. Dad. Oh. And then they come back. And then they, and then they come when back. When do they up. leave you? Uh, they never do, I hope. Uh, I got a text from my daughter Elizabeth yesterday and said, get me one of those T-shirts, Dad. Get me one oh, of those uh, those T-shirts that you're selling great. on the website. So I was thrilled with that. And then uh, he said, remember when I sent you that check? <laughs> Buy it yourself. No. Don't uh, you have internet, dear? The call. That's right. <laughs> so these... Uh, they're they're great. They're all they're they're all great. But one of the things I did a couple of weeks ago was read this uh, this monkey's baking a birthday cake book to the entire class. Ah, and you're doing your part for the community. There is this little kid in did there. Did you wear a red eyes on sweater? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hi, kid. Ken Bone. I'm, I'm Ken Bone. Uh, this one kid, I was told by Carla because she does most of the uh, drop offs and pickups, uh, that there was this one particular kid that came up to Carla and said, are you Michael's mommy? And uh, is Michael's daddy going to come back and read the monkey book again? Aww. And yesterday, I go in to pick him up, and I walk in, and this little guy, and he's a little, little guy. And Same he age up, as your son, though, but little? Uh, maybe a little younger. Maybe a okay. little bit younger by a few months or something like that. And he walks up, and, I mean, walks right up to me. He's like, you're going to read the monkey book to us again? And, and so... <laughs> Because he was entertained. Yeah. Because that Mike was a hair. highlight. People. Highlight. People are dying to be entertained. Well, See, Mike? And I looked are, at him is... and I said, certainly not. Yes. You got cash? <laughs> what yes, character yes. Did, you, did you do? Uh, what I did was the uh, the only thing I did was the audience participation where they asked for mama. There's a thing where the monkeys asked for mama. And I said, who are they asking for? And the kids go, mama. I said, no, excuse me. Who are they asking for? And Mama! I said, I can't hear you. And then they all go, Mama! Like the, the, the That's whole, right. And the then all the teachers go, Jesus kids. Christ. <laughs> no, the teachers are all in on oh, that. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. You're doing you're their doing, job. You're, you're doing that, uh, you know, that five hours a day of those little crumb crunchers. You know, you're ready yeah. to, you know, anything for a They're diversion. You know what this is, Mike? This is the... Uh, <laughs> Stop that. God, that's horrible. Please. No. This is your gateway drug to hosting talent shows. Watch well, it. Yeah, you know, Watch the, it. The, no, I, uh, I was thrilled about it. And, you know, the audience demand, I am uh, either tomorrow... Tomorrow or Friday uh, at 1.30 will be the return engagement. Uh, and I and I said, okay, get me while you can, ladies. Golf season just around the in corner. In demand, no tea time. Same book or different book? I think I will bring in Where the Wild Things Are. Oh, that'll horrify. I, oh, I like yeah, that. and some character now, voices. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't have a – that's not heavy with the, uh, the character it's voices. It's just emotion. You know? It's a, uh, I don't know. It's just a, uh, I, I might reread the monkey book because they've all seemed to want that. And at that age, if a mouse wants a pancake key. is a good player too. If the mouse wants a pancake, I believe that's what it's called. If you have, you know, mouse, don't say you believe, you know what it's, it's called. It, no, if you Zen give, it might shorts, be, it might you be know if you give called. a mouse a pancake. Yeah, There's right. a book about a mouse and a pancake. What are your top three? Go ahead and give, you were so much more. I'm so jealous. You were so much more engaged. Dragon than, and fat cat was great. Oh, see, good I don't. Book. I don't have dragon and because fat dragon cat. and fat cat. The cat actually takes a leak in it. It's a pee, there's pee in the book. It's funny. Really? What about yeah. the really? bell jar? By What's Sylvia Plath. Uh, <laughs> no? Thank you, Dan. 
No, I'm not going to do that's disgusting. The second that, book. What, what was that book? I don't even know that book. Oh, no. The about. second book, Mike, very good. The Olivia books are very good. It's about a young pig. The artwork is good and the text is simple. And the third book that Julia. Can loved, I ask you this? When your kids were growing up, your first child mm-hmm. was growing up, did you have the books organized? Did you organize the books? Because I'm smelling that a mile no, away. No, you know, you I might think have there, had a was shelf a, there was a shelf where they were all shelf. in alphabetical no, order. We didn't, and, no, you couldn't do that with kids' books. No. Couldn't. Yeah, because they're everywhere. But if they touch the DVDs, I hit them as hard as I could. <laughs> Children, stop that. So I'm excited. I'm very, very so my, excited. So my, my three that. books for you, I would recommend A Dragon and Fat Cat, Olivia, right. and of course, The Girl on the okay. Train. All right, enough of me being a good dad. How about me being an idiot? Uh, all right, I know you're going to tell me that, uh, that I can go into my phone and prevent this from happening, but uh, my pet peeve, I'm just going to tell you what it is. Yes. Is it's called the double text. Why, when I read a text but I don't respond to it, why does it send me the text alert again? Oh, you get uh, the bing, bing yeah, twice. Yeah, you got to clear it from your phone. You actually have to drill down. You can turn off the alerts altogether, but then you'll never get texts. Right. You won't see I that they come I want to get texts, but I, and I want to be alerted to texts. But when, you know, why, when, it, it to me, it's just like, I saw it. I know it made the little Mike, funny go sound. into settings right now. Let's all go into minds. settings. All right. Follow my lead. All right, I'm doing that right now. But also, couldn't he not just swipe right when the text arrives and then it registers as read? I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. If it's sitting on the, the, the table, I don't want to. I don't want to pick up my phone. I don't want to pick up my phone. That's, well, it's, that, it's that's not. It's not, it's not like it's going to burst into flames. It's an Apple. No, product. but I just. Do you understand? I don't want to interact, <laughs> and I don't. When I get it, I look at it like you. You know, you say we're having a great time at the hockey game, and I'm like, right. have fun, enjoy that, and then like you'll say another one that this is great, and I won't respond to it. Right, and, and then ten no minutes later, I get this is great again, and I didn't Bing. need to see that again. Yeah, I didn't need to see that again. And I know it's a little. It's a minor thing, but for me, all right, I'm in the the uh, setting. Okay, you're in the settings. Right. Yeah. Now go to sounds and haptics. That's what I have. What do you have? It'll be. It'll just I say sounds. sounds. Ah, you got to upgrade. All right, moving on here. <laughs> well, sounds. not the software. I just upgraded he is my software. Such a no, dick. Your no, because he's got the latest. Uh, he's got the latest does. phone. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've got. I've got the phone from six years ago. <laughs> I've got the little tiny phone from the 1800s. He's got the the he got. He got did you get the new one yet? Did it come yeah, in? Yeah, yeah. iPhone seven, baby. Of course he did. How's the camera? Is it good? You know what I did with this phone? So you it, can take pictures of yourself or your great. chimney camera's because you great. don't have any children? Uh, I'm sorry for not having children. Like That's a bad thing. Uh, look. Take a picture of your selfishness. <laughs> yeah, you guys sound really happy, take, let me tell you. Take a picture uh, of your selfishness. Uh, uh, is the camera good enough to capture that? <laughs> ass? All right, so tell me what's... Let's move on, as Oscar would say. Okay, let's move on. Amazing. <laughs> Tell me what's good about your phone. <laughs> so you want to hit v- vibrate on ring and vibrate on silence. So you get, all I know is I'm already thinking about something. Take a picture of your selfishness might have to be... Uh, show title. Might have to be the show title today. What, what do I have to do? So just turn off the vibration on ring and vibration on silent. No, turn it on, right? Turn it off. Oh, uh, turn it Vibrate off. on ring is on. Vibrate on silent is on. Yeah, turn it off all together. Off. All of them? Here. Yeah. Just look at I've phone. got another thing underneath the sound that says change with buttons. What no, I mean? would not mess around with that. <laughs> I have that too, Mike. Do you have that green or off? Yeah. I have change with buttons on. Yeah, you're good, Mike. Yeah. Now, because we've done I'm this, you, you're I'm going to have to periodically look on your phone for messages. Because now you won't get anything. Well, that's no, I don't no want to do that, though. I want what I don't <laughs> want. Stop it. God damn it. What I want to do is not get the second alert. I don't want to get the second alert. Oh, I don't wait, know, you know how what? to do Hold that. Hold on. No, you know what I'm going to do? Oh, wait, you, you know, know what? what? Maybe I'm going to go into alerts. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Here we go. Now I'm going to go. Let talking. me see if I... Now, don't say a word because I'm going into alerts yeah. right now, and I'm going to see if I can It's a podcast. Don't out. say a word. Yeah. All right, hold on just don't a second. Don't fill the dead air. Be, yeah. be very, very Mike quiet. Mike is thinking. Everyone quiet. Hold on. Where are alerts? Right. Phones. Reminders. It's reminders. It's reminders. No, it wouldn't be reminders, would it? Phone. Messages. It's a bitsy spider. We're not the soft serve ice cream. I'll work on it on my own. I'm not going to do it. It's a bitsy spider. Went up the crumbling chip. Uh, yes. You know, I'm not going to do it. Bitsy spider <laughs> went yeah. up the steak hey, in bed. All right, stop. <laughs> uh, behave yourself. I'll send you. I'll send you a movement watch. There you go. Oh, Beautiful. Nice. I like uh, it. Hey, nice. hey, is the? Are we? Am I up against a break? We're on a break. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, we are. All right. I lost track of time. I'm terribly sorry. Well, got a song we can talk up. That's always fun on the Michael Mary Show. How you doing, everybody? WDRC, where your friends are. Hope you're having a fantastic afternoon. Take a picture of your selfishness. Looking back on 
Joe, the political season is really ramping up. Maybe we here at the Moore Broadcast Network should have our own debate. Hit on the uh, the tough issues, the things that are important. Yeah, like immigration. We need a wall around this network. No more podcasts. No one from Baltimore coming in and getting a show. Or the legalization of marijuana. I know our show would vastly improve. Yeah, well, I'm high right now. But who would be the Donald Trump in this debate? You mean the loud, the obnoxious, the misogynist, the womanizer, rich? Well, obviously that's going to be Todd Moore. Yeah, but he has amazing hair. For now. RobinJoeShow.com. Subscribe <laughs> at iTunes and check us out on the TMOS app. Hey, do you get a chance to look at our T-shirts on the website? They're Great. fantastic. You're going to love these. Totally unique and totally TMOS. TMOS T-shirts on sale now, but only for a limited time. Now, here's what we're doing. For only two weeks, you can pre-order them at MikeOmeraShow.com. Just click on the banner. You'll see it right there. And all three T-shirts are on the banner, so you can look at them right away. There's the Chihuahua T-shirt. There's the I Love TMOS T-shirt. And there's the President T-shirt. You'll love these three awesome designs. You can declare your love for the show. You can tell the world that you're an American, or you can proclaim that you support me for president. I like that it's claim. That's my claim. Oh, my that's sweet little daughter. That's the one Elizabeth wants. I love that. So cute. Uh, if you can't decide, get one of each. Uh, beautiful election-themed T-shirts in every size. In every single size. Every single size. I'm serious about yes. that. You got that right. <laughs> that's right, Jennifer. She was on at the front of the show. Did you guys cross paths? <laughs> Double X! Oh, no. uh, anyway, uh, we've never done anything like this before. If you choose pickup when you order your shirt or your shirts, they will be waiting for you at the DC Improv on November 5th. If you don't, you get them delivered to your house when Easy. they're delivered to your house. We've never done it before. Your shirts will be waiting for you ready to wear at the live TMOS podcast taping. And if you choose delivery, we'll send them to your door. Pre-order yours right now. Don't miss out. Go to MikeOmeraShow.com and uh, order before October 24th, 2016. That's the date. Boom, bam. So I know That's it. people listen to this show same day. Some people listen to this show a week down the road. You know, get on your horse. Order it get yesterday. On your pony. Yeah, order it. Yeah, order it two days ago Thank for you. the people that are listening. Uh, I, I don't like the fact that people listen like a few days down the road, but I appreciate it because it's part of our, the metrics, right, as you would it's say. It's a long tail, Mike. I appreciate a, it. But I appreciate it, okay? I mean, really, some people listen to, I listen to podcasts. To How dare done, you? Just like you. <laughs> You're a phony. <laughs> You're just like you. Oh, hey, man. All right, let me find this. All right, thank you. News. 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 Interesting start to news you may not need today. We start today's news with shower statistics. Shower stats. Shower stats. Shower stats. Spy report. <laughs> Spy report. Hey. Hey. Breakdown. Oh, uh, anyway. Oh, no, I'm sorry. What? 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 I'm sorry. Come on. That's why I right. left. Hey, right? let's hey, go what? to Mike. He's over there in Florida. Hi, Mike. Because yeah. <laughs> they did so much for me in my career. Uh, number one, 79% of people stand, but 6% shower sitting down. Pony. Now, uh, you know, Drab mm -hmm. T-shirt sits down when he uh, showers. It thinks the weirdest thing in the world. Does so he have he's like, part of the 6% yeah. that actually sits down. Does he have a See, bench? No, it's anybody. really creepy. I mean, he sits on the floor of the shower? Yeah. 6% of Americans do, apparently. Wow. Well, the, the other 15% stand most of the time, but sit to shave their legs. So that's a group of women. Ponies. Well, sit to, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, number two. Silk. <laughs> Sixty. See, I knew. See, I knew we would get this interest because this is an interesting survey. But you know what? I, before you move on, I think that has to be like the that have like benches in the shower. No, yeah, no, I'm adults not sure just about... sitting down, cross-legged, hanging yeah. out. That's yeah. a weird thing, I'm man. not sure there is no statistics for shut-ins here, Rob, so I'm not sure. Do you still uh, take masks for shut-ins, Mike? Uh, yes, masks for shut-ins every single week. Good Number work. two, 68% face away from the shower head, 32% stand toward it. I face the shower head. You have to. Otherwise, right. it's like sneaking up on you. Yeah. And, well, and, you got to turn know. around a few times, right? Well, yeah. you did, I think the spin move, but I mean, yeah. by and large, I face the water. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it creeping up on me either. 32% uh, stand toward it, uh, and it says 68% face away. Oh, so I'm in the minority here. I thought I was in the majority. I face the shower. Well, Mike, you're an advanced showerer. Yeah, Not I, everyone uh, is at your level. Thank you so much. It also depends it. on your shower head. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, I like a good, powerful, Lyndon Johnson-style showerhead to, like, burst me through the wall. That's what I like. 
That you power wash and Lyndon yourself. Johnson asked yeah. for it by name. He had a special shower. Not only did they lower the shower because they'd make it taller for him because he was a tall guy, but he had the water pressure like turbo water pressure because that's the way he liked to shower. He was a nut that way. By the way, incidentally, that that desire for higher water pressure is a speed issue as far as I'm concerned. When the water pressure is not as great, it takes you longer. No. To- if am I mistaken? Oh, he loved. I think right? he, he liked to drink, and also remember he had tremendous testicles because he had his pants custom made. There you go, because he wanted room in his ball sack. That's what he said. That's right. Uh, number three, fifty-five percent make the water as hot as possible. Forty-five percent keep it warm but not hot. What say ye? I do uh, warm. I warm. Uh, warm. I don't like it warm, too hot. hot. Unless okay. I got to remind myself how lucky I am to have warm water. I'll go cold water in the morning. To Is that hum- a Bolivia thing? No, or, just to uh, humble myself, remind myself that it can't hey, it's always working. be like this. <laughs> Fascinating way of the most it, humble man I've ever met. <laughs> Truly, sometimes he goes into these keep, areas. Keep where, working hard. We're going cold this morning. Hey, <laughs> okay. do you have our water so hot that it fogs up the lens of your fantastic camera? <laughs> 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 when he takes it into the shower with him. Uh, 31% wash their hair with shampoo every day. 54% do it a few times a week. 12% do it once a week or less. And 1% never do. Ew. Gross. Uh, I take a shower. I uh, wash my hair every single time I take a shower. I just use Dial. <laughs> So yeah, I don't have any hair. You don't have when hair. I did have Wait, the no beautiful... hair down there either. Oh no, I'm plenty of hair down there. <laughs> you need some? I have more than enough hair down there. But when I had my gorgeous flowing hair, I right. would not shampoo, I would shampoo every other time. Really? Yeah, because of right. if it gets too dry, it gets, you get the flyaways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oscar, do you shower? Uh, do you shampoo every time you're in there? Every day, yes. All right, very good. Uh, let me see. Uh, 81% of people always wash their hair first, then their body. That would be me. Hair I'm first, in the 81%. Yeah. No. Hair first. Close with the shampoo. Close with washing. That's the last well, thing. Well, you I have do. a head. You don't have a hair. Thank you. So it doesn't. Uh, yeah, I, I, to, I, I, think, to, I think you're out of this survey now. Because right. of, I'm going to just uh, go uh, sit down in the shower. So for the, unless uh, you go hair down there first. That's right. Well, that well, I, I have do. A crew. I'll take you through it really. Well, so let me get through the survey. 76% always use a conditioner after they shampoo. 8% never use it. I know. Mm-hmm. Once I don't, in a while, I don't, I'll use I don't use conditioner. conditioner. I don't yeah. do that. Uh, finally, believe it or not, 72% of people say they pee in the shower. Oh, I took a leak this morning. Yeah. In the shower, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah I, it's all piping. I, I don't do it. I don't do it regularly, but I have because sometimes yeah. when that water hits you, you have no ability. You gotta to, go, baby. You know, I'm not gonna get in the shower, go pee in the toilet, and then come back. How about have you ever peed in the shower, Rob? All the time. I usually try to aim for the toilet from the shower. <laughs> That is hilarious. <laughs> Didn't Madonna famously say she peed in the shower to avoid athlete's foot? Yeah, because she uh, would pee on her feet. Exactly. Uh, yeah. uh, Classy uh, lady. Hey, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the show. Thanks a lot. I'll be running for president soon. Yeah. Uh, Have some no, yogurt. The thing, I, go, I go hair uh, with shampoo, hair, body. Uh, then I move on to shaving, where I have a shower mirror. Mm-hmm. Shave in the shower. Uh, and then I uh, wash the nether regions. But crotch and I and body I do that one more time and then uh, I'm done what a day beautiful yeah Thank I you. go head crotch crack I'm out you're done <laughs> yeah. nothing else with, with, so you do you use just the shampoo for that uh yeah it depends on what's there like, there's a body wash that combines shampoo and body wash but you use one pretty much by and then I'll then I'll move to the next bottle once that guy's killed all right. So okay. Yeah. What do you and you do the dial soap on the top of the head? I do that. Well, I start. I shave before, right before I get in the shower. And if right. I shave my head, especially because I got to rinse oh, my yeah, head, all the blood, and then uh, gallons of blood, <laughs> and then <laughs> body pits, crotch head. <laughs> uh, Shia and LaBeouf always scrub my nails. Thank you. Shia LaBeouf married his girlfriend Mia Goth in Boo! Vegas yesterday. The uh, ceremony went down at the Viva Las Vegas Chapel and was officially uh, officiated by Elvis. Yeah, I know you like this, Rob. Uh, it might have been an imp- impersonator, but can you prove it? Nah. <laughs> uh, the wedding was live. So we know it was real. Shia and Mia met while making the 2012 movie Nymphomaniac. He's 30, she's 23. Last July, they got into a huge public fight in Germany that was caught on video. After some locals gave him a ride from the scene, he told them that if he hadn't left, he might have killed her. I guess they're past that now. Real good luck to her. He's. Okay. 
Yeah, he's, he's ruined a lot of stuff in 30 years. He has, but uh, he's cleaned maybe... up his act. He's working on it. Yeah, Atta and boy, I, Shia. Let's let's hope he does. I, I I root for him, and I hope he's uh, doing better with his life. And uh, we'll see what happens. When Danny DeVito played the Penguin in the 1992 Batman sequel, Batman Returns, he had to work with a bunch of penguins, and those aren't the only animals he worked with. There's a scene where a spider monkey delivers a message to the Penguin from Batman. Batman. Unfortunately, instead of giving Danny the message, it did something else. He told a British talk show, quote, the monkey comes down, takes one look at me, and leaps at my jewels <laughs> and bit him in the genitals. Oh, Danny! Luckily, Danny's penguin suit was padded, so the monkey never got all the way through, but he did take, quote, a big mouthful. The trainer had to pull the monkey away from Danny's berries. Uh, <laughs> but the show must go on, quote, this is a quote from Danny, we did it again. It's in the movie. I had to go over there and brave it. I said, can we put a little bit of metal in there? I got a jewels, baby. Wow. That's uh, that's from Danny. Yeah. So, that's uh, Rhea Perlman's job. You. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's wonderful. <laughs> hey, nice FedEx greeting there. Like that a lot. What happened? New FedEx lady and big like thumbs up. That's cool. Hey, thank you. Th- thank you. That's all Listener of the hot? show. Oh, that's very cool. Oh, that's not- you. Mike, very she, cool. Is she built, Unsolicited. Is she built for speed or pleasure? Yeah. <laughs> can we just have? I listen to the show. Oh, please, can I get through the news? Can you hold I, up a sign to ask how she showers? It's been drilled into our heads that we, you two, it's been drilled into our. Let me get through this. Okay. Our heads. That we, we need to take down at least sixty water a day. I'm a big believer that. Yep. I do better in the weight loss department when I'm drinking my water. Eight glasses, or you know, that's it. Yeah. But. You're not the uh, only one who struggles to choke down that much water. I don't like doing it. Sometimes I feel like I'm forcing it. According to a new study out of Australia, our body has a swallowing mechanism that shuts down when our body needs more water. What? Uh, Carrie has a swallowing mechanism that shuts down. <laughs> Gross. If you're not thirsty. If you're not thirsty. <laughs> but you try to drink water. Rob Spiewak, man, you know, second, he kicked it into a sprint, didn't he? My goodness. Kicking ass. Uh, you basically uh, have to force your body to take it in. The researchers say, this is our bodies telling us there's no right amount of water to drink, and we should really just drink when we're thirsty. I don't know. I think you flush all the fat out and all the bad things. And the you know, a lot of people told me that you're less susceptible to breathing stuff if you're properly hydrated. Oh, and- yeah. By the way, I need also, to stay hydrated. You know, for the person that's probably been medically treated uh, based on this, when you're on the antibiotics that I was on, yes. they say drink tons of water because mm-hmm. they don't want your organs to be affected. Right. And now, thank God, a little something, something. Over the summer, four philosophy professors at MIT, the University of California at Merced, and the University of, is it Merced or Merced? I think it's Merced. Uh, University of British Columbia, they got boxes of feces in the mail. Oh, and now no. They, yeah, they're all philosophy professors, and pony. now they think they know who yeah, did it. Pony. pony. <laughs> <laughs> they believe it was another philosophy <laughs> professor, a guy named Brian Leader at the University of Chicago. He publishes rankings for philosophy programs called the Philosophical Gourmet Report, and they would criticized him back in 2014 for being combative and disrespectful. He wound up having to step down from being the editor. Brian has strongly denied sending the poo, but one of the packages had tracking in Oh, and traced it back no. to Chicago and a return address that was one digit off from his office. What an idiot. <laughs> the story just came out now, but according to the professors, the cops don't seem particularly interested in investigating. Uh, and that only leaves me with the question, if poo comes in the mail and knows who sent it, is it really sent at all? Philosophy, philosophy, philosophy. philosophy. Uh, We'll take a break. Come back with the audio of Alton Rob Spiewak right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. My fellow Americans, as my term comes to a close, I am making a concerted effort to uh, relax. More beach time, and I love to spend time with the Mike O'Mara Show. It makes me laugh. The Mike O'Mara Show. Every night, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. God bless Mike. And God bless 97 won the way. Uh, It's your beach station. Thanks, baby. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Amazon. Will, with the leaves changing color, youngsters are apple-cheeked and back in school. And Before you know it, zombies will be crawling the countryside looking for human flesh. It's uh, crunch time when it comes to Halloween right now. It is. Now. Time, time to get, to get all done. your Halloween stuff, whether it's yard decorations. Yes, uh, Oscar Mike, Santana. Mike, I notified the local authorities that my home will be giving out candy this year. 
And I'm excited because the first time it's happening in seven years. Do you have to notify the local authorities? Yeah, to, uh, to, let, that you're gonna, to well, let them know with that the sign in his our yard? house yeah. is safe to come by. <laughs> yeah. Now, will you light up your front porch to let people know what's We've going on? We've got a on? tombstone. We've got Halloween lights going in this weekend. What about a uh, jack-o'-lantern? Uh, no, because we think that the college kids are going to destroy Ah, yes. yes. I, uh, I'm i going to be doing something new this year. I will be going house to house in Cocoonville, and I will be knocking on the door like this. <laughs> Hi, you have any candy? <laughs> uh, you know what I did this weekend? I stocked up on liquor minis. Parents, because it was such a hit last year. Uh, so you have fun. You, yeah. you, and Oscar, yours, uh, you're the big question mark as to how it goes. Me? No, no trick or treating in here. No, it's gonna suck. Won't, Don't they go to the church done. though for little yeah, kids? Yeah, they go to the dangerous. church for their thing. They go for the yeah, church. Boom, but bam, I still, you're done. Look. Halloween's the one holiday of the year where I wish it was a normal neighborhood and you could run around, but I don't have that, so say la vie. Yes. Amazon, make sure you have everything you need. If you need it or want it, Amazon has it. Go to michaelmarishow.com slash Amazon. Click the button on our website or use the TMOS app and click on that shopping cart. Uh, then shop like you normally would. It's that easy, and we thank you. Let's open up the audio vault for today. Tuesday, October 11, uh, 2016, Rob. I play- Final call of the ALDS game. Do you want to hear the coverage of David Ortiz going out and thanking I'd the fans? I'd love to because I missed it last night. I actually didn't get a chance to watch it. I, I was a petulant little brat, and I'm like, well, that's it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. That's they, it. They gave, him, they gave him a, a decent amount of camera time. I think you'll appreciate this. David Ortiz out on the field being mobbed by photographers. Waving his cap to the crowd. Audience here, I would say maybe 25,000 fans have stayed for this. At least. and uh, That's terrific. This is... Something you just don't ever see. He's person great. getting this kind of attention. David now. It's Boston fans, guys. Standing That's on the right. pitching rubber. He's stopping his cap to the crowd now. He pats his hand on his heart. Waving to the crowd. Turning around completely. We're now waving God. to the fans in the bleachers. So many Looking many out many. toward right field where he hits so many home runs. Looks like he's fighting back tears, Joe. He's very somber. Of course, very disappointed. The result with the Red Sox being swept. Losing a one-run game for the second time in this as he has came in from left field, replaced by Chico Walker, Ted Williams. All right, that's enough. Uh, thank back. you. Let me just say this, okay? Okay. My, mo- my moment of fan snobbery, if I can, for just yeah. a second, okay, guys? Cities all around the country. Let me think of a city where it might be a good example. Oh, yeah, Washington, D.C. Uh, listen, that's 20,000 people that stayed after their team got their asses handed to them, and they stayed to say thank you to a player. That, to me, is Red Sox Nation. Just wanted to yeah. share that. That's very cool. I'll never forget that guy. He gave us so much joy. I'm so glad they did this. And I was a dick and turned the TV off. And I am so embarrassed. That's the other had, side of being a Boston fan. You know, but I had no idea that that would happen. Uh, True. I will tell you this. If I'd been lucky enough to be in that stadium and I thought I could stand and cheer long after the game was over to get him to come out again, I would have been right with that 25000 That's fantastic. That's cool. Makes me proud to be a Red Sox fan. Glad That's you got a chance to, to hear say. it. All right. Thank you. Uh, because of our early start i did not get a chance to cover this yesterday billy bush suspended from the today show That's and right. rumors are sorry to laugh it's that. going to be a firing <laughs> yeah. which and oscar brought up yesterday he just relocated his entire family west coast to east coast so this is sort of a big deal this is how they what is can i just stop for yeah. a second the only thing billy bush said was she's hot as s yep now so what billy bush said i think that uh, look as he's somebody, a victim of this entire i think well, he turmoil. said she's hot as s. He's trying to make the guest feel. I, he is. I told my it's mom. His job. What's he I, supposed to, my to do? Mom's, smack Trump? My mom's going off the rails, right? Should have just come on instead of that general apology. Says as an entertainment host, I my job is to make the guest feel comfortable at ease before we go into camera time. If he was seriously talking about rape or he was talking about any other the crimes he has committed thing but i was just letting him riff until we got onto the set and yeah, trump it. was the guy that said it and trump stood up and now they're talking about how he's back after his debate performance and i think if nbc fires billy bush it's ballless also, i think it's terrible i will say this now i'm not excused that you know someone would let another person say what he said in front of them but we've all been in positions where people that we are doing business with or working with or say, trying to keep at ease yes, yeah. say yes. things that are completely off the rails up and off right. the rails. And you're like, right. 
either I can engage and ruin the entire next chapter of what right. we have set up, it's or I'm just going to roll it off my shoulders it roll. and very pretend awkward. that right. he did not just say this. It's part of what we do. Look, is it? are we proud of it? No. no. There's nobody in this room that's proud We're of that. But the fact is, But it happens that way, and I, I think NBC, to, to do that to me, if the, if the words that come out of Billy Bush's mouth, no, he was on the bus with this douche. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's what and, happens. And literally on assignment. It's right. not something he chose to do. Well, the, By the way, and, and let me make, make it real clear, and I want to make sure I, I think everybody should know how I feel about the comments. I'm one of the people that said that type of, of shtick. I said this yesterday. That idea of grab the E. Yeah. That, look, that's, when people are talking about not said in the locker room, they're talking about that specific kind of jargon. Is there crap said in the locker room? All the time. Yep. But that where he's bragging about what he can do as a star, and you're going to punish Billy Bush? I think that's crap if they do that. I really, really do. So this that, is not what look, and, and right. I'm not, and I'm. I just want to clarify because I, I had a solid conversation. Sorry, with, we're hijacking your audio. It happens, Oscar, man. I mean, uh, uh, Rob, but we have to do that. That's okay, Phil. With uh, with my mom, I I sat there and I said, Mom, I'm telling you, like, in this business and in the in the D level that or that where I am and I had been on terrestrial radio, ever said something like that? I don't think a guy that's really slaying women left and right says he's going to grab women by the. You I've know, never heard it. I've never, never heard, heard that in my, in my entire life. career. I have never heard it in my entire I, life. I I've said, never but heard that. people have said things more racial than anything else. Absolutely. Where I am like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and know that he's not a, think he's not a rate, and then move on to like it's when the, the worst. You know? and, and by the way, every, and when you talk about racial yes. stuff too, people are put in a situation like that. And in, everybody feels the same. Yeah. Yep. What do you do? You confront and yeah. destroy the situation. And I have, and I haven't. Yeah. And I and when, yeah. and when I have, I haven't regretted it. Well, no. When I when I have it, well, though, Mike, I mean, I'm not I, saying I have regretted I'm it. saying you are sixty seconds from from coming back on air. Right. Yeah, right. No, the Billy Bush thing is look. Yes. It, it's a justifiable f up. And I, it's it's not to me. It does not, not rise fireable. to the level of fireable no, 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 because no. he was he was in there doing. It. And, and by to the me, way, it's barely suspensionable. Yeah, I mean, but it's a guy right before we go on air says, "You know them," and I know who them is. And right? we're fifteen, 15 seconds before yeah, the yeah, microphone. And then he comes oh. back on. I'm like, but so, then you know, you file it away, and you go, "Oh, all right, we're yeah, gonna get this I guy know. on and gone we're as not, quickly we're as we can." We're not ever gonna have this guy back. Again. That's like precisely that is the deal. But if we yep. go on and be like, "What did you?" We were talking off air. What did you mean about yeah, that? What, what exactly did you mean by the? I really, I, I would hate to see this happen because you know what? I know him. I know Billy Bush, and Billy Bush has been a nice guy over the years, mm -hmm. and he has that reputation in the business. And I would hope that they would not blow up a man's career because some other douche decided to yeah. do this. Uh, let's see what we'll see. What so happens. this is how they handled it. Savannah Guthrie, very good, sad voice yesterday. Talking yeah. about it. We want to note one other thing. Pending further review of the matter, NBC News has suspended Billy Bush, the host of today's third hour, for his role in that conversation his role. with Donald Trump. And that's okay. Oh, hold on. Stop it right there. All right. Okay. He's done. I can tell what I can tell by the way the uh, the suits wrote the copy uh, that that they're for his role. That's all you need. So to know. yesterday in hour three, who sits in with him? The guy who yelled at him over the Ryan Lochte incident, Al Roker who can barely contain his excitement. I'm Al, along with Cameron. Uh, as you can see, uh, Billy Bush not joining us today, as you're probably aware. Part of that 2005 Access Hollywood taping with Donald Trump in the news all weekend. Oh, right, NBC, right. which owns Access Hollywood, has suspended Billy for his role in that conversation pending further review. Al Roker, man. He's uh, a climber. Wow. He all right, we'll see what three. happens. We'll see what happens, but I think it'll be a, a drag if that goes yeah. down. Yeah. Just because of my personal experience meeting him nice guy but and with that said yeah could it could it have gone another way sure uh, yeah of course it had. He, what he didn't does need he to, say uh, you know what what, who, you what, could, what scenario? you could say he doesn't laugh he doesn't laugh and he doesn't but Sir, you're trying we to don't nervously talk about laugh. we don't talk you can hear us the donald strikes he, again he was he made a get... company that's newsworthy he said something that's newsworthy yeah. he, he did that all right, right, we'll see. We'll see how. Let it us plays close out. with this, Mike. Are you still taking your news on a WESH Channel Two Daytona? I watch it every <laughs> single day, Rob. This is a moment I really enjoyed. A reporter was in the field uh, talking about everyone evacuating Daytona last Friday, and mm -hmm. some guys in the street just doing donuts behind her, <laughs> and it really pisses her off. And there <laughs> he said after the clip as well. And folks, I hope that the Daytona Beach police stop this guy because he is just driving erratically. <laughs> This 
is why there's a curfew. This is exactly why there's a curfew. He's going to end up hurting himself by going back and forth okay, on this roadway down. like this, just calm speeding. Down. So hopefully, Daytona calm Beach down. will see this. I don't understand what his problem is, but he is a danger. But you see, she wrote. I haven't seen the video. It's the first thing I'm going to look at when the show's over. She wrote her copy for evacuation, and there's a guy on the streets. That's why she's pissed. But so they bring this guy up on charges. We're closing here. But okay. uh, brought, his name is Brandon Ware. When he got to court, his t shirt said the word F speeding tickets. <laughs> Oh, that's that's awesome. That so that's your Flor there. Floridian of the day, <laughs> and that is your magic audio vault. Guys Have a great donuts. Tuesday, everybody. Oh <laughs> that's funny. Oh, well, shouldn't laugh at that, but we no, are. No, it's bad, yeah. man. So we're a little on PC at the end of the show. That's it. Thanks for joining us episode of the Mike O'Mara Show. Be sure and join us every day on the air online at MikeO'MaraShow.com to mail us anything that doesn't stink or tick. Address is TMOS Box 32101 Washington, D.C. 2007. All messages and birthday requests for our weekly mailbag segment can be sent to Rob with two B's at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, it is wide open Wednesday. Do it. Our phone lines will be open at 888-920-MORE. That's 888-920-6673. We will be taking your phone calls. We will start at 9 a.m. sharp. At five of them. We will take at least five. And we will start right at 9 o'clock and keep them coming. Yes. I know if you get a busy signal, get through. We're going to take as many as let we can. Let it ring. Let it ring. Let it ring and let it rip. Right. Thanks, guys. For Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, Mike O'Mara reminding you to join us again for your favorite part of the day, the Mike O'Mara Show. Bye-bye, everybody. So long. Ciao, ciao. One last thing. Please remember that Apple.com slash Amazon is the best way to shop for anything and everything. So, shop Amazon and get there through our website. Always open at MichaelMaryShow.com slash Amazon. Now, go in peace. Kim Bone. Kim Bone. Kim Bone. Michael Mara Radio Entertainment. <laughs> <laughs>